Good afternoon. My name is Becky Hames, and I'm the manager of external affairs for the UCSD Computer Science and Engineering Department. Uh, previous to uh, me in that capacity, I was at chemistry, and previous to that, I was assistant director for the COSMOS program in 2007 to 2014. Uh, so when I came on, Charles and I were a little bit wet behind the ears. We were trying to figure out what we had gotten ourselves into. I had only been at UCSD for a month when Charles approached me and asked me if I would consider taking over uh, the, the program manager job, as it was called at that time. And uh, I had had some experience with working with outreach, and I thought, well, sure, why not? Little did we know the adventure that we were getting into. And um, it, it just continued to just be very challenging and fun at the same time. And Charles was uh, a, a good director uh, for our staff. He challenged us. He was very discerning about how the program should be run, that it was a quality program with quality faculty leads, uh, faculty researchers, um, and residential staff and administrative staff. And he always wanted us to be at our very best, even including the high school teacher fellows. Uh, he set the bar for us uh, that, we, that UCSD would have the best Cosmos program year after year. And he also just became more and more engaged in the program and uh, wanted to just, just make the experience the very best for the students. The program continued to expand. When I first started uh, with Cosmos, we had seven clusters, and now we're, you're up to 10, Charles? 10. And it was 150 students when I started, and now he's at 200. And that was always a goal, is we always have to continue to make this opportunity available to as many students as possible. And one of the things that Charles struggled with the most was turning down uh, academic standouts, uh, high school students, especially if they had financial need. He really, really wanted to have them be able to participate, and it would really be heartbreaking for him when we would have to say there's just not enough scholarship available. And so that has always been something for him that he's been striving for, is to make this opportunity available to as many students as possible and from a, a very diverse backgrounds, because it makes for a really interesting pro summer program when you have students from all over and from all do over different places in their life. Um, so a picture s says a thousand words, so I shouldn't have too many more words to say as I go through my pictures. Um, Charles liked engaging with our students, and here is an example of that, our breakfast with the director that we implemented a couple of years into the program together, and he would meet with every cluster. We had clusters, there were courses, uh, and then we, again, we, we were small then and continued to expand, so it was more and more students to meet with, but it was really something he wanted to do, was to be able to engage early with the students, meet with them before they went to class, and here you have an example of that. One of my favorite stories, and I'm going off script here, is we had a student that missed breakfast with Charles. And Charles and I were just finishing up. He was the only student that had missed from his group. He was in uh, the mecha mechanical engineering cluster two. And he came running, had sheet marks on his face and dried spit on the side of his face and his hair was all everywhere. And I thought, oh boy, Charles is going to lose it with him. He's just not going to be happy because he's late and, and Charles always wants you to be on time. But the student was pretty smart. He, he actually realized he had, an idea, he had an opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with the director, and he used that opportunity. And I'm happy to say that that student here is here getting his PhD in bioengineering. He's a, a first-generation Hispanic student, and I still see him quite often. And from that experience, here he is, and he just continues to thrive, and that's a great example of this program. And so another favorite story of mine to tell is, I told Charles about our second or third year in, Charles, you know, we, ha we, we do a beach barbecue. And he said, really? Where, where do you do that? I go, well, we're at Wilhite well, Shore, it's just down the way. And well, when is that? I said, it was Wednesday, you know, around 6. Okay. And I thought, well, whatever. So I went, and all of a sudden, it looked like the creature from the Black Lagoon <laughs> comes out of the water. And here's Charles greeting the students. They loved it. 
loved it. And I think it's a tradition now that he does that every year. And I looked at Charles one time and I said, you are having way too much fun. And he said, I have to tell you, I didn't have these experiences when I was growing up. And I feel like I'm, you know, a Cosmos kid myself when I'm in this four-week program. And so he just totally embraced it in so many ways, including <laughs> our Cosmos Carnival. So again, Charles, we have this Cosmos Carnival. When is it? Where is it? I told him, I show up and here we go. Here's Charles. And we had a bounce house. I couldn't find him. Where's Charles? He's in the bounce house. And the students were yelling, Charles too is in the house. <laughs> he totally got it. So not only the academic excellence, but he totally engaged and the students loved him. We would have Cosmo Olympics and he would be running that and we'd had all sorts of competitions. He'd be a judge. And then we would do, be doing Cosmo's chants and pretty soon the students started yelling, Charles too, Charles too, Charles too. And he's running back and forth, you know. They even started a Facebook fan page for Charles too. <laughs> I kid you not. But the other th part of this is that Charles was very proud of the Cosmos alumni. He was so happy to hear stories about them excelling after Cosmos academically and in their careers. We had the Cosmos uh, California Nobe Nobel Laureate dinner every year, and we'd invite our alumni back to present their research they did in Cosmos. And Charles was so proud, and he was such a great mentor to them to sh help them to be able to do great posters. And I have to say UCSD posters were always pretty special. Um, and he. He also worked to make sure that they were professionally prepared. We'd go through with the students and talk to them about etiquette and about um, networking with the, uh, the guests that were there at this very elite event that was typically done at the Getty Museum. And so I just want to close by saying that, Charles, your care and interest in the mission and goals of Cosmos are sincerely appreciated. And I was very excited to hear that you started this core fund that will help support Cosmos and other programs, I think that's wonderful. You know that there's need. It's going to open up opportunities for students to experience this wonderful program. And I just want to wish you the best on your new chapter. And I hope the Cosmos kid in you will continue to thrive and, and, and just do wonderful things going forward. And thank you for allowing me to have this opportunity to talk today.